So good morning and welcome. My name is Dr. Christine Mangino, president of Queensboro Community College. It may not look like it, but across the street, we're in the middle of finals. Thousands of students are taking tests online and on campus. In fact, our Student Government Association was scheduled to be here until they reminded me that they had to prioritize their exams. I promised them that we would put the highlights from today's event on YouTube. They asked that I extend a special thanks on their behalf, as well as all of the students that they represent. As we look forward to the spring semester, I want to thank our elected officials for recognizing that the city's road to recovery from COVID runs through the City University of New York, and in particular, Queensborough Community College. Our courses, programs, services, and workplace-based pl applied learning opportunities continue to strengthen the communities in which we live and serve. I am pleased to welcome this morning New York State Senator and Chair of the Committee on Higher Education, Toby Ann Stavisky, Assembly Member Ed Bronstein, Assembly Member David Weprin, and Council Member Barry Grodencheck. All are tireless advocates of public higher education. I also want to thank, welcome to this ribbon cutting, members of my cabinet, as well as members of the press and media. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I began my tenure as president of Queensboro 18 months ago, and I continue to be inspired by the astonishing impact that this institution has on our community. And I can continue to be inspired by each of you. We would not be able to provide access to life-changing educational opportunities without you. We would not be ranked one of the top community colleges in the country, recognized for our success in lifting low-income students into the middle class and beyond without you. Queensboro is arguably one of the most diverse colleges in the country. We serve about 12,000 students in our degree programs, many of whom come from underserved neighborhoods and are the first in their families to attend college. We also provide access and opportunity to an additional 10,000 New Yorkers through our continuing education and workforce development programs. Across the street in our advanced manufacturing and 3D printing lab, we're showing our students how tomorrow's jobs benefit our world today. At the start of the pandemic, our college community came together and gave back by manufacturing personal protection equipment for local health professionals right there on our lab. Cloud computing is another great example of how we advance our community. Queensboro is working with Google and Amazon Web Services to deliver comprehensive micro-credentials in cloud training and other areas of IT. A thousand students so far have gone through these programs. They're acquiring in-demand skills in fields that are very important to New York's recovery. And whether it's IT, education, science, or healthcare, Queensboro is vital to the community we serve. At the start of the pandemic, with the help of Council Member Barry Grodencheck, we converted our gym into a COVID vaccination site and provided doses to more than 12,000 people. Biology professor Dr. Monica Truillo and colleagues went out investigating traces of COVID-19 in New York City wastewater to determine how widespread and active the pandemic was in our borough. But we don't do this alone. We rely on our partners, friends, and of course our elected officials who make our community and students so successful. If the last year has taught us anything, it's that we need to strengthen each other. When we strengthen each other, we strengthen New York. Today, we are strengthened by the addition of 5035 Cloverdale Boulevard, the former Oak Hills Jewish Center, now known as the East Building at Queensboro Community College. This center was built in 1957, just before Queensboro was established. And when we started, before we had any buildings of our own, the center provided space to the college to teach its first classes. So after six decades, the relationship comes full circle and I am proud that it will once again support Queensborough's teaching, learning, and student success initiatives. The college was originally designed to serve 5,000 students. Today, with nearly five times that number, we are very excited about the impact that this additional space will be in providing residents of Queens increased access to higher quality, affordable education. 
The East Building at Queensboro, of course, would not have been possible without the support of local elected officials, including Senator Toby Ann Savisky, former Queensboro president and current Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz, late Borough President Helen Marshall, and City Council members Barry Grodencheck, Inez Barron, Danny Drum, Peter Ku, and Karen Koslovitz. We are grateful for their individual and collective roles in the college's growth and development and service to the community. As most of you know, Council Member Grodencheck's term ends this month and he really spearheaded the acquisition of the East Building. Barry, thank you. This would not, this would not have been possible without you, and we are so grateful for your support. Barry is about as Queens as anyone can get, and he is very much a part of Queensboro. I can turn in almost every direction on the campus and see where Barry has had impact. Air conditioning in the gym, renovations in our central kitchen, the reconstruction of our steps in the quad, and all that he has done to help us better accommodate students with disabilities. He's also dedicated to the arts and education and supported the college's three cultural centers, the Queensboro Performing Arts Center, well known as QPAC, the QCC Art Gallery, and the Harriet and Ke Kenneth Kupferberg Holocaust Center. But what I feel the most is how Barry really cares about students. Barry was on campus just the day before Thanksgiving to help distribute food to hundreds of students in need. He cares deeply. He understands what community means, what service means, and what it takes to make things happen. Former presidents uh, Diane Call and Barry had a strong relationship. She said that Barry's passion translates into extraordinary energy, and she was right. His energy has brought us to this moment. I would like to invite our elected officials to offer a few words before we cut the ribbon. They are all tireless advocates and supporters of Queensboro. Please join me in welcoming New York State Senator and Chair of the Committee on Higher Education, Toby Ann Stavisky. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. We talk with our, this is a, a math mask off for a moment. Uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, the synagogue started here in 1967. In 1967, my husband was assistant to the president of Queensboro and acting dean of administration. Uh, and in fact, to put it in perspective, many of you know my son, he hadn't been born yet. <laughs> so we come full circle, as you said, uh, and this is really uh, uh, a perfect use for a community facility. And uh, uh, let us hope that we, do, we continue our funding, the money that we put into the budget in April. We increased base aid for community colleges. We, to me, very significantly added 20% to the opportunity programs. There is quite a capital construction uh, effort. We even put money in for mental health, which is a growing concern uh, on college campuses. So let us hope and let us continue to come together with bigger and better buildings. And this morning, I spent an hour on a Zoom with the CUNY Construction Fund, of which I am a trustee. And we are appropriating funds and will continue to do so because there are schools like Queensboro. So thank you. And now I'd like to welcome Assembly Member Ed Bronstein. I'll follow Toby's lead and uh, take my mask off. I'll pick this up. It's a little low. Madam President, th thank you for inviting me today. Um, uh, it's a beautiful day, and uh, it's an exciting day. And I just want to say we are so proud of Queensboro Community College here in Queens, and I'm so proud to represent it in my district. 
Um, and, and most of all, we love having the students uh, here in this part of Queens. And I just want to take a moment to thank my colleagues in government, uh, Senator Toby Stavisky, Chair of the Higher Education Committee. I talk to Toby frequently, and the amount of work that she puts in uh, in making sure that we have such great higher education institutions in our state uh, is tremendous. You wouldn't believe the amount of work that she puts in, and we're very lucky to have here, her here right here in this part of Queens. So thank you, Toby. And of course, Barry, uh, throughout your time in office, you've always had the right priorities, uh, and you can never go wrong investing in our students right here at Queensboro Community College. So I want to thank you and just say it's an honor to join everybody today for this Reverend Connick. Thank you. Thank you. And now Assemblymember David Wepfren. Uh, thank you, uh, President Mangino, uh, and uh, I'm so honored uh, to participate in this uh, wonderful ceremony. I actually uh, remember uh, when Oakwood Jewish Center was active uh, here, and uh, uh, I remember um, Diane Call uh, talking to me uh, and Barry uh, about uh, the acquisition, and I know Barry uh, was instrumental uh, in getting uh, you know the capital money. Uh, to uh, to improve uh, this facility and and I of course uh, I'm going to miss Barry where I know he's not leaving the uh, the neighborhood so he'll still be around but uh, he's certainly been a great partner for me uh, in this area uh, and for those of you that don't know I had the council seat uh, uh, two people before Barry uh, Mark had it uh, before immediately before my brother but um, the work that Queensboro has done. Uh, during this pandemic uh, is, is really amazing. And I really want to congratulate you, uh, President Mangino, and your staff uh, for really uh, being such a, an asset uh, and a resource uh, to the community uh, during this pandemic. And uh, there's no question uh, that Queensboro uh, is a gem uh, of higher ed. And uh, I know uh, we, as uh, in the Democratic majority in the Assembly, uh, along with uh, our chair in the higher ed, uh, Senator Stavisky, and uh, in, our, in our house, Deborah Glick, uh, will be fighting uh, for CUNY and Queensboro uh, in, in the upcoming uh, capital budget. And uh, I know uh, the best is, uh, is yet to come uh, right here. Thank you. And of course, Council Member Barry Grodenchek. I didn't write a speech this morning, which is a good thing and a bad thing, but uh, I am uh, overwhelmed at your generous remarks, Dr. Mangino, and um, my public service career, which is coming to an end, at least temporarily, who knows what, what lies beyond December 31st, um, has been all about helping people. And um, you've had a secret advocate in my house because uh, she doesn't get to come to events too often because she's so busy. But my wife is with us today, uh, Dr. Deborah Grudenchik, who is um, a Nassau Community College graduate originally and is, uh, has been a professor there for, uh, I think, 35 years next month. Um, but she's also a CUNY graduate. Her PhD is from the Graduate Center. and. That all started one night. We were newly married, and she said, I think I'm going to get my PhD. I said, that's wonderful, but you're blocking the TV. And um, nine years and our son later, I was honored to be with her mother at her graduation uh, from, it was nine years, right? I got that right? OK. So um, this is really a wonderful thing that we're doing today. and. Those of us in government know how long it takes to get anything done, although this was relatively quickly. Um, you know, I had had conversations with your predecessor and, and Rosemary Zins, who uh, has since retired as well. And then one day, um, Judy Bergstrom, who is uh, a friend of mine uh, for more than a generation, her mother was on the school board when I was a, a young boy at uh, PS201, and her parents are among very few couples that both have a school named after them in the city of New York. And she said, we need money. I said, what do you need? She said, well, I said, what do you need? She said, well, I said, I said Judy, give me a number. So the number, I think, was $600,000 uh, to finish the project. And uh, I went to see the speaker, and um, here we are today. 
And um, as has been said by my colleagues who have been such a treasure to work with um, for, for, in some cases, uh, decades, Toby um, and I go way, way back, although I go way back with David as well and his family. And Ed Braunstein's a newcomer relatively, but uh, it's been a long time with Ed too now. And um, the truth of the matter is that the, the elected officials here in Northeast and Eastern Queens really work so well together. And that's been a, um, a key to the success of this school. Um, and it really has been for me a labor of love um, because uh, education was infused in me since I was a little boy and have, being married to a college professor who was the daughter of a college professor at a community college we understand the value of uh, what goes on here um, and has not been said, but uh, it, sometimes Queensboro graduates go on. I know um, Jay Hershenson, who uh, was a deputy chancellor at CUNY for years, and also our next mayor. Those of you who don't know, uh, Eric Adams is a graduate of Queensboro, and so we're really excited about that. And, and at the end of the day, um, all else being equal, the most important thing is the impact that all of you here uh, President Mangino and so many of the people I've been honored to work with, um, the impact that you have on the lives of young people and the things that they go on to do. Um, and a lot of it starts right here. And I'm happy today because, you know, Queensboro is landlocked. It's surrounded by parks and by single family and two family homes. And there really is nowhere for them to go. Um, and, you know, the population of Queens has since this university, this school was founded, um, has probably doubled. We're up to about 2.3 or 2.4 million people. And um, we need more space. That's the truth of the matter, because we have a lot more people going here than was, as President Mangino said. So today we're going to cut this ribbon. I would be remiss. My chief of staff wanted to be here, but he had something came up, and I'd hoped he'd make it. But Irene Chung, who is my scheduler, runs, runs my life until December 31st, when my wife will take over again. Um, I want to thank them for the work that they've done, and I really want to thank you for doing this today. Um, it's very special to me, and uh, Queensboro is uh, and always will be a very special place for me. And uh, the things that we have done. Most more recently, I was um, I visited um, the latest exhibit of the Holocaust Center, and if you haven't seen it, it is really um, incredible. And I know it's going to be up for a number of years, and hopefully, as as COVID lessens, God willing, soon. Um, many more people will see that. So I think it's time to cut the ribbon, Doctor. Thank you all. God bless you. And I'll, as David said, I'm, I'm still in the neighborhood. <laughs> so yeah, you are very special to us, as is this building. And as you said, it is now time to um, cut the ribbon. So I invite our elected officials to join Barry and me as we cut the ribbon to signify the important day in Queensboro's history.